Chapter 7 Toothless Wakes Up Toothless woke up about three weeks later. Fish Legs and Hiccup were at Hiccup's house. Everybody else was out, so Hiccup decided to take the opportunity to check on Toothless's basket. He pulled it out from under the bed. A thin plume of bluey grey smoke was drifting out from under the lid. Fish Legs whistled. He's awake, all right, said Fish Legs. Here we go. Hiccup opened the basket. The smoke billowed out and made Hiccup and Fish Legs cough. Hiccup found it away. Once his eyes had stopped watering, he could make out a very small, ordinary dragon looking up at him with enormous, innocent, grass-green eyes. Hello, Toothless, said Hiccup, in what he hoped was a good accent for dragonese. This should, of course, read, How de do dee thee there, Toothless, but I've translated it into English for the benefit of those readers whose dragonese is a bit rusty. Please read Hiccup's book, Learning to Speak Dragonese, for a crash course in this fascinating language. What are you doing? asked Fishlegs curiously. Dragonese is punctuated by shrill shrieks and popping noises and sounds most extraordinary when spoken by a human. Just talking to it, mumbled Hiccup, very embarrassed. Just talking to it? gasped Fishlegs in astonishment. What do you mean you're talking to it? You can't talk to it. It's an animal, for Thor's sake. Oh, shut up, fish legs, said Hiccup impatiently. You're frightening it. Toothless huffed and puffed and blew out some smoke rings. He inflated his neck to make himself look bigger, which is something dragons do when they are scared or angry. Eventually, he got up the courage to unfurl his wings and flap up onto Hiccup's arm. He walked his way up onto Hiccup's shoulder and Hiccup turned his face towards him. Toothless pressed his forehead onto Hiccup's forehead and gazed deeply and solemnly into Hiccup's eyes. They stayed there, snout to nose, without moving for about 60 seconds. Hiccup had to blink a lot because the gaze of a dragon is hypnotic and gives the unnerving feeling that it is sucking your soul away. Hiccup was just thinking... Wow, this is amazing. I'm really making contact here. When Toothless bent down and bit him on the arm, Hiccups let out a yelp and threw Toothless off him. F -f -f fish His Toothless hovering in the air in front of Hiccup. What well, we want fish now? I haven't got any fish, said Hiccup in Dragonese, rubbing his arm. Luckily, Toothless didn't have any teeth, but dragons have powerful jaws, so it was still painful. Toothless bit him on the other arm. F -f 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 fish said Toothless again. Are you okay? asked Fishlegs. I can't believe I'm asking this, but what is he saying? He wants to eat, replied Hiccup grimly, rubbing both arms. He tried to make his voice sound firm, but pleasant, to dominate the creature by the sheer force of his personality, Gobba had said. But we have no fish. Okay then, said Toothless. Eat k, -k, k cat He made a lunge for Fiddlesticks, who streaked up the nearest wall with a yowl of terror. Hiccup just managed to grab Toothless by the tail <coughs> as he flew off in pursuit. The dragon struggled, wildly shouting, Want for for fish now? Want for for food now? Cats are yummy. Want food now? We don't have any fish, repeated Hiccup from between gritted teeth, feeling all his calmness deserting him, and you can't eat the cat. I like him. Fiddlesticks mewed indignantly from a beam high up on the roof. They put Toothless in Stoic's bedroom, where there was a mouse problem. For a while, he was happily swooping after the desperately squeaking mice, but then he got bored and started attacking the mattress. Stop! yelled Hiccup as feathers flew in all directions. Toothless replied by sicking up the remains of a recently deceased mouse right in the middle of Stoic's pillow. <coughs> ah! said Hiccup. Ah! said Stoic the Vast, who entered the room at that very moment. Toothless launched himself at Stoic the Vast's beard, which he mistook for a chicken. Get him off, said Stoic. He doesn't do what I say, said Hiccup. 
Yell very loudly at him, Snorik shouted. Very loudly. Hiccup yelled as loudly as he could. Please, will you stop eating my father's beard? As Hiccup had suspected, Toothless took absolutely no notice whatsoever. I knew I'd be useless at yelling, thought Hiccup gloomily. Drop to the floor, you horrible little reptile, yelled Stoic. Toothless dropped to the floor. You see, said Stoic, that's how to deal with dragons. Newt's breath and Hookfang, Stoic's hunting dragons, came padding into the room. Toothless stiffened as they paced around him, their yellow eyes glinting evilly. Each was about the size of a leopard and they were as delighted by his arrival as a couple of giant cats might be by the cute little kitten. Greetings, fellow fire breather, hissed Newt Breath as he gave the wriggling newcomer a sniff. We must wait, purred Hookfang menacingly, until we are alone, and then we can give you a proper welcome. He gave a vicious swipe at Toothless with one paw. A claw like a kitchen knife just nicked Toothless on the rump and the little dragon howled and jumped into Hiccup's tunic until only his tail was poking out of the, out of the neck. Hook Fang, bellowed Stoic. My claw slipped, whined Hook Fang. Get out of there before I make you into handbags, yelled Stoic, and Newt's breath and Hookfang slunk out, muttering obscene dragon curses under their breaths. As I was saying, said Stoic, the vast, that's how to deal with dragons. Stoic was looking at Toothless with uncharacteristic anxiety. Son, said Stoic, hoping there might be some sort of mistake, is this dragon your dragon? Yes, father, Hiccup admitted. It's very, well, it's very small, isn't it? Said Stoic slowly. Stoic was not an observant person, but even he could not fail to notice that this dragon really was remarkably small. And it hasn't got any teeth. There was an awkward silence. Fishlegs came to Hiccup's rescue. That's because it's an unusual breed, said Fishlegs. A unique and a violent species called the Toothless Daydream. Distant relations of the monstrous nightmare, but far more ruthless and so rare, they are practically extinct. Really? Stoic surveyed the Toothless Daydream doubtfully. It looks just like a common or a garden to me. Ah, uh, uh, but with respect, chief, said Fishlegs, that's where you're wrong. To the amateur eye, and indeed to its prey, it looks exactly like a communal garden. But if you look a little closer, the characteristic daydream marking, Fishlegs pointed to a wart on the end of Toothless's nose, marks it out from the most ordinary breed. By Thor, you're right, said Stoic. And it's not just your average toothless daydream either. Fishlegs was getting carried away now. This particular dragon is of royal blood. No, said Stoic, very impressed. Stoic was a terrific snob. Yes, said Fishlegs solemnly. Your son has only gone and burgled the offspring of King Daggerfangs himself, the reptilian ruler of Wild Dragon Cliff, the royal daydreams tend to start out small, but they grow into creatures of impressive, even gargantuan size. Just like you, eh, Hiccup, said Stoic, giving a great laugh and ruffling his son's hair. Stoic's tummy gave out a plaintive rumble like a distant underground explosion. Time for a little supper, I think. Clear up this mess, will you boys? Stoic strode off, relieved to have had his faith in his son restored. Thanks, Fishlegs, said Hiccup. You were inspired. Not at all, said Fishlegs. I owed you one after setting you up for that fight with Snoutlamp. Father's going to find out at some point anyway, though, said Hiccup gloomily. Not necessarily, said Fishlegs. Look at all that talking you were doing with the Toothless Daydream here. That was an incredible, unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. You'll be training him in next to no time. I was talking to him, all right, said Hiccup, 
but he didn't listen to a word I said. When he was going to bed that night, Hiccup didn't want to leave Toothless in front of the fire with Newt's breath and hook fang. Can I take him to bed with me? He asked Stoic. A dragon is a working animal, said Stoic the Vast. Too much hugging and kissing will make him lose his vicious streak. But Newt's breath will kill him if I leave him alone with them. Newt's breath gave an appreciative growl. It would be my pleasure, he hissed. Nonsense, boomed Stoic, unaware of Newt's breath's last remark, as he didn't speak Dragonese. He gave Newt's breath a friendly cuff around the horns. Newt's breath just wants to play. That sort of rough and tumble is good for a young dragon. Makes him learn to stick up for himself. Hookfang extended his claws like flick knives and drummed them on the hearth. Hiccup pretended to say goodnight to Toothless by the fire, but he smuggled him into the bedroom under his tunic. You must be absolutely quiet, he told Toothless sternly as they climbed into bed, and the dragon nodded eagerly. In fact, he snored loudly the entire night, but Hiccup didn't care. Hiccup spent the whole of the winter on Burke in various states of very cold, ranging from fairly chilly to absolutely freezing. At night, too many lays were considered sissy, so Hiccup generally lay awake for a couple of hours until he had shivered himself into a light sleep. Now, though, as Hiccup stretched his feet out against Toothless's back, he felt waves of heat coming off the little dragon, gradually creeping up his leg and warming his freezing cold stomach and heart, even travelling right up to his head, which hadn't been truly warm for almost six months. Even his ears burned contentedly. It would have taken the snoring of six strong dragons to have woken Hiccup. So deeply did he sleep that night. Thank you.